is Jenna. Today I am doing a Bible journaling with me tutorial um, in my interleaved journaling Bible which has a full length page to work with and acrylic paints. So I am gathering up my paints right now. I'm going to be doing a cloud scene. So um, kind of a sky with clouds at the bottom and you'll see as it comes together. Um, I actually posted this page on my social media and I got a bunch of requests to do a tutorial on it. So here it is. Um, so I have a dark navy blue, a teal, pink, purple, an off-white, um, it's called antique parchment, I believe, and a white color. And I'm just starting off by painting my sky in. So I'm ma mainly using that teal, and then I'm going to darken up the edges with some of that navy. Um, as you can see here, I just kind of... Um, I'm using this large flat paintbrush and my big thing is always just to get the paint on the page. So I'm going to be doing a bit of finger painting to do my clouds, um, but I like to use the paintbrush to kind of give me um, the background and then I'll use the paintbrush here for this sky as well. So you can see I just kind of um, paint in that darker color around the edges and try to let it blend together with that teal. Um, just to give a little bit of variation in that sky, but the sky is not the focal point the clouds are going to be, so I'm not too worried about it um, being perfect or anything. Um, Bible journaling isn't about the page being perfect because it's not about the art. It's about worshiping God and spending time in the Lord. So um, now I am just going to start laying out my clouds. So I'm using my paintbrush, my flat paintbrush, to kind of um, add in a layer of white at the bottom to... Um, draw out the bases of my clouds here. And now I'm adding in some pink. So um, the pink straight out of the tube is really bright. So I just added a bunch of white to a little bit of that pink um, to create a nice light pink color. And um, I'm adding in kind of the shapes of my cloud. And it's kind of hard to see right now, but you'll um, get more of an idea as we go along. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to work um, kind of from top to bottom when it comes to the clouds. So I'm starting with white and then the light pink, darker pink, purple. Um, and then I'll do another cloud over that, starting with the white, pink, purple, you know. Um, and you can see I'm kind of hopping around with the colors, but you can kind of get the idea um, more as we go along. I would say that this one is not necessarily a super beginner friendly page. Um, I honestly had some difficulty with it and I wasn't going to do a tutorial on it, but you guys really wanted one. So here is where I am going to start finger painting. So I find with things like clouds, using my finger is just the best way to get the shape that I want. It gets the amount of paint on the page that I want. Um, so I'm using a pretty thick amount of the paint. Um, I do not prep my pages when I use acrylics because you don't need to. They don't bleed through. Um, so I am here, I'm just picking up some paint, the white paint, and I'm just using my finger in little circular motions to fill in um, the top part of my clouds. So the reason why I'm doing the different shades of the white and the pink um, is because you need the variation in colors to, um, or at least shades, to give you the definition of the clouds and also um, gives you the idea of the light reflecting on certain spots of the clouds and things. Um, so now you can see I'm going to go back over the pink again. So originally when I was using my paintbrush, I was really just trying to mark out where I, my clouds were going to go or the I am somewhat of the shape of the clouds. And now I'm actually going in with the paint to try to create the clouds. So I find that doing these little circular motions with my finger helped to give that um, look of those nice fluffy clouds. Um, and then you can see here I am um, adding a darker pink. And I still didn't use the pink straight out of the tube just because it was really bright. Um, so I still am mixing it with some white, but this time I'm using more pink and less white so that I get that middle tone. Um, and then I am using the purple pretty much straight out of the tube here um, on the bottom. So I'm trying to add a little bit less purple in those um, in that middle part of the clouds there because I don't want that to be too um, dark. And then the bottom part is where I'm really gonna have the most of the purple. So it kind of looks like the sun is behind the clouds in those um, sections, if that makes any sense at all. Um, I also did add a little bit of that off-white um, or antique parchment in there too, just to um, dull the white a little bit. Um, I just felt like it was a little bit too bright for my taste. So um, adding that little bit of off-white also I think adds a little bit of um, 
character to that. So now I am adding in the purple. Um, again, with just the circular motions using my finger. <laughs> um, so if I use the purple and then I need to go back to white, I will switch to a different finger, um, a clean finger, so that I don't get purple and white mixed together. But um, I usually will just kind of go along um, using the same finger like white, changing to the darker colors. But if I need to go from darker to a lighter color, I will switch um, usually between my like middle finger and my pointer finger. Um, and so I know I feel like I'm not doing the best job of explaining what I'm doing here, but I hope that you'll get the idea across. I think that it really is one of those pages that just kind of takes practice and you just have to do it. You just have to try. Um, and you can see I'm just kind of filling in uh, a little bit more of those clouds. I added a little bit of white at the bottom right above the purple. Um, so it just kind of add a little extra oomph and these are very puffy clouds um, but I really like how they ended up turning out um, I just really want to encourage you to give it a shot um, finger painting is one of those like really fun things to me um, I feel like it really helps you to dive even deeper with Bible journaling um, getting your fingers dirty and Remember, um, even if it doesn't turn out exactly how you wanted, because this page didn't necessarily turn out exactly what I envisioned, but I really still like how it turned out. Um, it's, again, it's really just all about spending time in the Word and with God. So we don't need to focus too much on the painting. That's just the fun part of it. Um, one of the, should be one of the fun parts of it. But um, anyways, now I am writing out the verse. So I'm working on Psalm 136 verse 26 which says give thanks to the God of heaven for his steadfast love endures forever and I am doing folk calligraphy for my lettering here so I'm first starting off by just writing out my verse with um, in just normal cursive lettering and I'm using my Uniball Signo gel pen for this um, and once I have it all done with cursive then I can add in the thicker downstrokes. I do have a tutorial all um, all about folk calligraphy, three easy steps to uh, hand lettering, I think is what it's called. And it gives you a much more deeper um, overview of how to create folk calligraphy. But the basics are whenever you're writing a letter, you're either going up or down for the most part. And so anytime that your pen is moving upward, you're just going to leave that um, line really thin but then when your pen is going downward you want to thicken up that line so now I'm just going back over my normal cursive and wherever my pen is moving in a downward motion I make that line thicker um, so <laughs> it's a pretty simple concept actually um, it can take a little bit of practice but once you get a hang of it it's so much fun and if you've been around here for a while you know that I love to just do hand lettering on pretty much all of my pages saves money from stamps and stickers and things um, and it's just a lot of fun so um, again that verse was Psalm 136 verse 26 and then I'm going to write out the date and then um, in this Bible I'm doing this Bible for my son so on every page I write out a little prayer um, sometimes little tidbits about what's going on with Clark and how he's growing um, but I always pray the scripture over him and write that out in the page so that's what I'm writing out right now um, I am going to put all the links to the supplies that I use in the description of this video. Um, so I am trying now a thing where I am no longer doing blog posts, but still doing these tutorials on YouTube. Um, so normally I would say go to the blog post to find the links. Um, but today I'm just going to, um, link them straight into the description of this video. So, um, be sure to click downward and check that out to find everything that you need. Um, to help you create a page like this. Um, I'm also using a Tombo Food no Suke, the gray. This is the dual tip Food no Suke. So it has a, dark, a black side and a gray side. And I'm using the gray just to add a little shadow um, to my lettering. It's very faint and you can barely see it, but I do think it kind of added a little um, something extra to finish the page off. Um, and that is my page. Um, I know I didn't go too in depth on how to create these clouds. I went kind of fast, um, but I hope that watching it, you could kind of get the idea of how to create these. 
Um, and I hope that you have fun with it and enjoy the time spent in the word. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, and be sure to check out all the stuff in the description below. All right. Much love. Many blessings. Bye.